There really is no substitute for learning the notes of the fretboard. If you've got to think about which note you want to play and where to find it, if that takes you time, then that means you're not playing. So really there is no substitute for knowing instinctively where to find a particular note. So what I'm going to show you here are some very simple ways of navigating your way around the fretboard. There looks like there's a lot to learn, but in fact, there's only 12 different notes. There are repeats and octaves all over the neck. Now, what I mean by octaves are where you've got two notes that are separated by a distance of eight notes. They're the same note, but one is a lower version and one is a higher version. Let me give you an example. If I play this note of A here on the fifth fret of the sixth string, and then I play a major scale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I end up with another A, which is just a higher version of the A that I started on. So that's what I mean by an octave. Now, octaves are a really good place to start if you're trying to find notes. So let's start off particularly easily. Let's start with the open E string. Now, if you're on the E string, or the A string, the way that you find the octave of that note is to go two strings over and two frets up. So if we start with the E, that's the open string, so we could call that zero if we call the frets one, two, three, and so on. So if we go across two strings, so A string, D string, and then we go up two frets, we're on to fret two of the D string, so here's our low E, and there's our octave. The same works if you're on the A string, so if I pluck the A, go across two strings, D string, G string, up two frets, low A, and there's its octave. This works whether you're using open strings or fretted notes, the same rules apply. You saw me do that scale a moment ago. Okay, so there's an A, fifth fret, E string, Go over two strings, so I'm onto the D string, and go up two frets. So I was on fret five, now I'm on fret seven. Low A, and it's octave. Okay, so E string and A string, two strings over and two frets up to find your octave. Now, if you're on the D string or the G string, it's still two strings over, but it's three frets up. So if I pluck the open D string, okay, so if we go over two strings, that's now on the B string, and we add three, one, two, three, so we've got the low D, and there's the octave there. Same thing for the G, open G, go over two strings, it takes us onto the high E string, one, two, three, low G, and the octave. Okay, so it's very, very simple. So what we'll do now is we'll start with that low E again and we'll work our way across the neck, finding the octaves. So there's our low E, and on the E string, so we go over two strings and go up two frets. There's our octave there. And now to find the octave of this, because we're on the D string, we go over two strings, G string, B string, and go up three frets, one, two, three, so E and E. It's a very, very simple system. Now, another way that you can do this is uh, a method that's used for tuning your guitar. If you want to get your guitar relatively tuned, and what I mean by that is that it's in tune with itself, you can fret your guitar at the fifth fret and that will give you the same pitch as the next string. So like for example, if I pluck this fifth fret of the E string, it should sound the same as my open A string. So that tells you that at the fifth fret on the E string, that's the note of A. Similarly, if you go to the A string and you go to the seventh fret, that gives you the octave of the low E. So a basic rule of thumb is the fifth fret of a string will give you the note that's the same as the next string, and the seventh fret will give you a note that's the same as the previous string. Now a word of warning here, 
the system slightly falls apart when we get to the G string and the B string. The strings are all tuned a fourth apart and what that means is that you have to go up four notes in a scale or as you can see here five semitones, five frets, before you get the pitch of the next string. However, on the guitar in standard tuning, the G string is only tuned a major third to give you the B string. So the B and G are only four frets apart, whereas all the other strings are five frets apart. So the idea of going to the fifth fret and it giving you the next note doesn't work. So it's the fourth fret here. Okay. And then it's the eighth fret, not the seventh fret. Here. So the E and the A work, the A and the D, the D and the G, that works as fifth fret gives you the next, the uh, note that's the same as the next string, and the seventh fret gives you the note of the previous string. However, when we get to the G and the B, it's fourth fret and eighth fret. And then for the B and the E, we're back to fifth fret and seventh fret. Okay. Now, one other way that you can navigate your way around and find notes and octaves is if you take a chord shape that you're familiar with what you should do is find out the notes that constitute that chord so i'm playing a c chord here what you should learn is what notes are being made when you make that shape and you'll find out that even though you're playing five strings you're only actually playing three different notes c e and g and then those last ones, it's just the octave of C and the octave of E, like that. Now the easiest way to do this is go onto a search engine, put in the phrase fretboard map, and you'll find loads and loads of images. And what it should give you is the note for every fret on every string, usually for the first 12 frets, because after then it's just a repeat of what you have in the first 12 frets. So if you look at a fretboard map diagram, and then you take a chord, you can work out what those notes are. So you can learn the notes of all the chords that you are familiar with playing. You can also use the octave idea that I demonstrated at the start of the video to then find other versions of those notes and those chords. One last little point. Every note on the fretboard is separated by two frets, except E and F and B and C. They are only separated by one fret. The fretboard is actually laid out exactly the same as a piano keyboard. And if you look at that, you'll always have two white keys with a black key in between. But then you'll see two sets of white keys that have no black key in between them. That is E and F and B and C. As long as you bear these things in mind, you should start to learn how to navigate your way around the fretboard.